What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. And I provide simple, realistic ways to achieve your financial goals in today's economy. So today we're gonna to talk about how to invest your first $1,000 into the stock market. So you're a beginner, you're like, how do I get started with putting my first $1,000 into the stock market? I've saved this up, I've decided and justified putting this money into the stock market. How do I get started and what's the best way to go about it? I got you. Here's the answer in this video. First off, I'm assuming you're a professional, you've got a full-time job and you're already contributing to your 401k and you're over the age of 21. If you're younger than that and you don't have a full-time job yet, maybe you just have an extra $1,000 to put into the stock market, you want it to grow, you've read and you've learned that it's actually profitable to put money in the stock market, just keep listening to what I'm gonna say. This is gonna be very valuable for all those people I just mentioned. If I were able to reverse time and reinvest my first $1,000, this is what I would do. This is what I would focus on. So outside of the investments that you're already enrolled in when you get a full time job like a 401k, for example, this is what I would do with my $1,000. I would realize that when it comes to certain investments like stocks, for example, individual stocks, I would stay away from those at the beginning because at that point, I knew absolutely nothing. I mean, I knew which companies I liked. I knew that Apple made pretty cool products. I knew that Microsoft made pretty cool products. But when it came to all the stocks in the world, I didn't know very much about them. And so when you get onto the stock market and when you do your research, there's a lot of companies that look really good, but the same way they can grow really fast in the stock market, they can plummet really fast in the stock market. And to avoid all of that from the very beginning, I would focus on doing this. I would put that first $1,000 into a Roth IRA and I'll show you exactly how I do it here in this video. But the reason I would choose to put it into a Roth IRA is because it's tax advantaged, it's a retirement account. So the money that's going into that account is already pre-taxed. But when retirement comes around and it's time to pull that money out, guess what? You don't get taxed at all and it's a pretty cool thing to have. And so as it grows aggressively inside of that account, which I'll show you exactly how to put a, a decent portfolio together that's gonna grow pretty well and pretty aggressively, but also have very little downside. But that is step one, deciding to put it into something like a Roth IRA. That's what I would personally do if I could go back in time a decade ago. That's exactly what I would do. And just so you know, when it comes to opening up a Roth IRA, there is no age limit whatsoever. But I already have a separate video on just Roth IRA, so check that out if you want to know even more about it. We're going to jump straight into my Roth IRA and what account that I use. So I personally use M1 Finance for my Roth IRA, and I'm going to show you exactly how I have mine structured just to give you a little bit of an idea of what to look at and how to start investing this first $1,000. So if you're interested in M1 Finance as well for your Roth IRA, check out the link below. So I'm gonna put my phone here on the screen. As you can see right here, there's a little donut in the middle with a number in the middle. This is a small part of my net worth, by the way, but I seriously need to take my Roth IRA way, way, way more seriously this year, just so I can continue to build it and have that tax advantage that I was talking to you about. But either way, let's look at this right here. I want you to look at the bottom two. As you can see, there's two Vs and that V stands for Vanguard. So we're looking at VOO, which is right here, I just clicked on it, didn't mean to. Um, VOO, and then below that is VTI. These have been the top two that I've always looked at from the very beginning. I've known about these for a long time, even before I started investing, but I, I did massive amounts of research on both of those. And similar things to those is what I would say to look at investing in when it comes to your first $1,000 and these things that I'm talking about and referring to are ETFs, exchange traded fund. That's what those two are. Now, before we jump into those two, as you can see on top of that, there is Apple and there is Microsoft. Those are my two favorite companies. I'm not telling you to invest the same way that I'm investing, but as you can see, look at the percentages next to them. Obviously the way that I'm doing it right now works. Microsoft is up 50%, Apple's up 31.8%, but look at the other two at the bottom. These are more secure in that they have lower downside. VOO is up 23.7% and VTI is up 19.9%. So think about everything you've heard about stock investing and how 
4% returns are good and this, that, and the third. Look, you can get an average of a double digit return by investing in something like VOO and VTI. I just wanna put that out there. But anyway, if you're wondering why I have two individual stocks in there, it's because I've taken the years to actually learn more about the stock market before I even thought about investing into individual stocks. Plus, this strategy you see right here on my screen actually isn't mine. I straight up did research and followed some of the best investors in the world and did research on them and what their strategies are. And a guy named Ian Dunlap came up with this strategy where there's two at the top and then two at the bottom. Very, very strong strategy. It's worked very well. And um, I decided to put a small portion of my net worth into that strategy and in different sections of the stock market, I've used different strategies, just an FYI. So anyway, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here for a second and talk to you a little bit about ETFs and what they are and why you should be focusing on those. So ETFs, what are they? Why should I focus on them? That would be the question I would have. So I'm going to answer that for you. I know I just showed you a couple of ETFs on the screen, but I'm also going to talk about different categories of them and how you can get yourself involved with them too. So first of all, these ETFs are tracking indexes, but not just any indexes, they're tracking broad based indexes, which means it can cover a large array of different types of industries and companies and market caps. I do have an entire investing course, which you can get by clicking the link down below. That's gonna go way more in depth on all of those things. I don't have all the time in the world to go over every single one in this video, but I will tell you this. I'm gonna give you a few examples and I'm also gonna show you how you can find some of these as well. A few examples of these broad-based indexes are gonna be things like NASDAQ, Russell 3000, S&P 500, and CRSP Total Index. I know this is a lot of information for the video, so I also have a free guide if you want it. You can click it down in the description as well made the decision that I'm going to give you guys a lot more information this year. So that's what I'm making sure I work very hard to do. But anyway, you want to look at a few different broad based indexes. And what an index is, is a basket of securities or investments that represents and measures the performance of the overall stock market or a specific sector. In this case, it's going to be the overall stock market because these are broad based and the security in having broad based funds is that it's looking at the whole picture and not just part of the picture. It's not just looking at technology companies. It's not just looking at the food industry or pharmaceuticals. It's looking at the whole picture, how the whole market performs. And of course, every broad based fund might have their own nuanced differences, but we'll go over that here in just a minute but I wanted to make sure I gave you a quick synopsis of why I even look at indexes and what the heck an index even is and why should we only look at broad-based indexes to start with? Well, here's your answer. For example, I just listed a few and I'll put those on screen too just so you can keep track of what I'm talking about. So we just talked about the S&P 500, which was on my list of examples of broad-based indexes, right? You can't directly buy the S&P 500, but you can buy something that tracks the S&P 500 and and the example that I showed you on my phone of that was VOO. VOO is Vanguard's ETF that tracks the S&P 500. Does that make sense? And when it comes to the CRSP US Total Market Index, BTI is Vanguard's version of that. So what if you're not into the S&P 500 or the CRSP? Well, you can look into other avenues like the Russell 3000, like the NASDAQ, but you have to look at that within yourself and do your own research and look at which broad based index makes the most sense. And after you figure out which broad based indexes you like, I would recommend just picking two out of those. And once you pick two indexes that you like, you can then search for what ETFs track this index, which ETFs track the Russell 3000, which ETF tracks the NASDAQ. Now I happen to know a few of these off the top of my head, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. So if you were wondering what is something that tracks the NASDAQ, for example, that would be QQQ. That is the name of the ETF, which you would look for on M1 Finance or whichever brokerage you're using to use your Roth IRA. Oh, and by the way, if you decided not to do this with the Roth IRA, you could still do the same exact tactic with just using ETFs on any brokerage as an individual account. Anyway, we're gonna to go to holdings. This is gonna show you what is inside of the ETF that tracks the NASDAQ. 
So when we're looking at these companies, we see at the top of the list, we have Apple, Microsoft, we have Amazon. Everybody loves all three of those companies. I don't really know people who don't like any of those companies. Just saying. We have NVIDIA who makes semiconductors, chips and things like that. We have Meta, also known as Facebook, Broadcam, I'm not familiar with Broadcam, Tesla. We have uh, both classes of Alphabet, which is Google, Costco, Adobe, AMD, which is advanced micro devices, Pepsi, Netflix, and Cisco. Now, this website is only showing me the top 15, but if we're looking at the total amount of holdings they have, they have a total of 102 companies. And that's gonna be one of the things that separates each broad-based ETF from another is how many holdings they have. Holdings means how many companies are under their umbrella. So in this case, there's 102 companies within QQQ. But anyway, one step is looking inside of it, looking at what companies are in it. That can actually help you decide what companies you're gonna invest in in the first place. Whenever you do get ready to invest in individual stocks, it's gonna be very telling what companies the best ETFs in the world put at the top of their list. That's gonna be very telling of well, what should I invest in? And as you saw, Apple and Microsoft were at the top of their list. But anyway, another step would be looking at their overall chart and Looking at charts is pretty simple. You just need to look at what direction it's going in. So this is obviously going up. There may have been some dips in between, but it's definitely going up. You just wanna look at how much security you have for yourself. So this is QQQ's chart right now. And each chart for each broad-based index ETF that you look at is gonna look different. You just have to look at what kind of mood are you in? Are you, are you in the mood to grow really aggressively and then kind of fall aggressively too? Or do you want something more stable that's just kind of always going up? And when it does go down, it's only a little bit. You, you have to decide for yourself what you're looking at when it comes to that. But anyway, once you pick two indexes that you like and you pick two ETFs that track that index, that's the first step. Then you look at their charts. Then you look at what companies are inside of them because maybe you don't agree with the companies that are in there. Maybe you feel that when you look at each individual company that's within the chart, and you look at that company's chart, let's, let's say you see that you choose an ETF that has the company AT&T in it, and then you look at AT&T's chart, and you're like, oh man, AT&T's chart ain't looking too good. I don't know if I wanna invest in this because at and is too high up their list, and their chart is trash. I can't be having that. That's kinda how you're gonna base your decision. You're gonna look at those few things. A lot of people on YouTube, a lot of people in books will just kind of tell you just invest in ETFs, just invest in index funds, but here's the why behind it and here's how you can look into exactly why. Without doing crazy analysis or anything like that, this is just spot checking and looking at a few things that are very telling that can help you put your money in the right place and grow aggressively. Just look at the track record, look at how much they've grown year over year, look at how often they plummet, if they ever plummet at all, and look at how often they recover. That's gonna help you out. Anyway, that web Website that I was just on that shows you which companies are inside of the ETFs is called ETFDB. But that's what I would do after picking my two ETFs of choice. And you can pick, you can choose ETFs based off of multiple factors. A lot of them are going to be very similar to each other in, in terms of how they behave, but you also need to look at how much do they cost? Do you want to go more expensive or do you want to go cheaper? You just have to remember you do get the products that you pay for. I personally like Vanguard products. I also like Fidelity products, but it's gonna be purely up to you in terms of what you decide to invest in and why. I can't tell you as a financial educator, hey, invest in VOO, invest in VTI. Like, I'm not gonna do that. I believe in those companies. That doesn't mean you're going to. You have to do what's best for you and you have to do your own research. And you might choose different ETFs that perform better than the ones that I chose. That's awesome, I want that to happen for you. I want that for you, but you're gonna to have to put in that work. Again, if you want more information about overall stocks, because this is kind of like a pretty short video when it comes to going over the stock market and where to put your first $1,000. If you want more information, make sure you click that link below and get my free investing guide. It's gonna help you out and it's gonna help you start your journey a lot quicker. And when you pair that with this video, you're gonna feel a lot more comfortable and more knowledgeable when it comes to the stock market as a whole. But that's what I do. I would choose two broad-based ETFs and that's where my $1,000 would go. And you might be able to buy one share of each or a couple of shares of each, just depending on what you choose, but that's gonna be your start. And then you don't have to invest a thousand each time. You don't even have to buy a full share of these each time. You can put a fraction in. So if you're only able to put in like $50 a month or $100 a month, that's fine. 
in addition to that $1,000, this is going to grow and this is going to be the start of building your net worth. I started with $1,000 in Weeble. I want to show you something real quick. When I first got started with my Weeble account, I only started with like a couple hundred dollars. And then when it grew to a thousand, I was still calling it a baby account. And the way that I see it, I always want my money to grow and I never want to feel like I made it. So even once it starts to hit certain milestones and goals, I'm still going to keep calling it a baby account or I'm still going to keep saying I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm where I want it to be. And now I'm just going to keep growing beyond that. And even if I stop putting money into this account, it's still going to keep growing because it's invested into the market. That's the wonderful thing about this. But I just wanted to show you, even though I do have some individual stocks in this account right here, and they're all green and they're all up, I'm only invested into four different individual stocks. And then at the bottom, as you can see, I have VTI. And sure, my account has 22K in there right now. But what I'm saying is just a few short years ago, it was about in the four digits and we're talking like a little over 1000. So this may be your first $1,000 that you're investing in the stock market, but it doesn't have to end there. And I would definitely recommend you keep putting money in there as much as you possibly can and as much as you can possibly afford to do. Make sure your savings is in order. Make sure all that good stuff is in order first for sure. But as you're able to put money in there, maybe you get some extra money or whatever, put an extra $25 into that. It's only going to keep growing. And that's how you truly make your money work for you. But anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe. I will see you next time.